Hello, everybody. Welcome to the thing. The thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Today's thing is brought to you by Edge. <laughs> Hello. We're here for a thing. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. All right. Great. Okay. I'm going to, I'm just admitting people. Zoom gives you this like omnipotent power, you know, it's like enter. <laughs> What's up, you guys? Hi, hi, hi. Welcome. <laughs> glad to get in on this. Yeah, glad you're here. Hello, hello. Yes. Great people are using that chat box. You can totally do that. I, I probably everybody knows how to use Zoom at this point, but I'll, you know, I, I'm happy to also walk you through it. You can, there's a chat box on the right. Uh, if you're on your laptop for computer, which I hope you are, because I can't imagine doing this on a phone, then your chat box is going to be to the right. Uh, that's a fun place to get involved because we're muting mics because it gets, you know, it just gets crazy because we've got a hundred people. Come on in. Oh, that's okay, Donna. Don't worry about it. You know, you can also be comfortable in your... <laughs> you know, just without a camera on. Hi, 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 Bolton. Thank you. Hey from SoCal. What's up, Dwayne? Lisa, you're on your phone. Is it hard? <laughs> I feel like it would be a lot on, on a phone. Hi from California to Liza. Donna from my pajamas. Yeah. Hi to Ethan and hi from Florida. Okay, cool, cool. There's a hundred people in here. This is awesome. From cool. Spain, Atlanta. What's up, you guys? David, how are you doing? Oh. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Are, are we, Siobhan, are we capped at 100? You know, I think we can get up to 300. <laughs> but I don't know. Let me see the waiting room. Let me see. I can admit. Yeah, I can. I muted myself here. What's up, guys? Okay, cool. I don't know. I actually haven't thought about that. But, <laughs> okay. Yeah, Zoom Pro only allows you to do 100. Oh, really? You don't I'm know not that. sure what level of Zoom we're at. Yeah. Okay, guys. So yeah, we're at, we are at 100, which means no one else we, is getting on. Cool. Welcome yeah. in. Hi from Seattle. David, it's like a celebrity sighting. Yeah. David feels very comfortable when people say things like that. <laughs> I do. Siobhan says I do, so I guess I do. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Okay, my people, San Francisco, it's a lot easier on a phone and iPad. That's good to know. And from Georgia and from Argentina, what is up, everybody? Thanks for joining us. My name is Siobhan. Uh, this is David. <laughs> um, real quick, if you haven't used Zoom too much yet, I think a lot of people have. I use it every day. But um, there's a couple of things you can do. On the right-hand corner, you can do speaker view or uh, gallery mode. I like gallery mode because I like to see y'all's beautiful faces, but it is up to you. You can also, if you see David, he should be on your first screen out of four. Uh, you can click on his little, uh, his, the dots in his right corner, and you can pin him if you want to, you know, see him more than everybody else. You can, I don't know, you could pin anyone. That's the magic of this weird... <laughs> platform um but you could also do speaker or you can do whatever you did you fancy uh the chat box is where we're gonna do the most engagement just to manage the sound chaos we all have sensitive ears in particular us as a community so um the chat box is where we're gonna uh speak to each other for the most part i'll i'll unmute y'all when we get into it for certain things can we record this we it's you can totally i'm recording it and uh i will post it um, I'm a kid. Hi, Ethan. We love the kiddos. Welcome, welcome. We've had parents with kiddos at these sessions, so that's great. Uh, and it, this is a this is a safe space for all, so no worries there. Um, yes, yeah, so I will be posting the recording of this because it is recording in this very moment. Um, so yes, yeah, so the chat, uh, the screen view, the muting. I think we've got. I think that's. I think that's it. Um, Hi, Joe McMurray. Eric Cole is my husband. Just signed up with Edge. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks to have. Let's, we're ha super happy to have you. Hi. Hi. And um, fantastic. This is so fun. Yay. <laughs> um, all right. Let's, let's get going. 
and let's start talking about some voiceover. Basically, we're here to have, oh my God, Athens, Greece. This is so cool. There's like, there's at least, I think, like five different countries happening right here. So the, uh, the objective here is uh, we know there's all kinds of turmoil happening everywhere, all kinds of uncertainty, all kinds of stuff that we're going through. This is a place for all people in the voiceover community, whatever place you're in coming from, we are here to be positive, to talk about doing the work, to keep up our practice, and to be a community who's still working together despite all the things that are, you know, we're facing right now. So that's the goal. We're not going to, you know, we're going to keep it positive and keep it empowering. And um, that's, that's all that we really ask. And uh, uh, some point, okay. So, <laughs> so then we'll just, we're just going to take questions as best as we can. There's a lot of folks. So please have some patience with us. And um, we're here to listen to each other, talk to each other, share knowledge. David answers questions, but last time lots of folks chimed in the chat box with some of their perspectives too. And we love that. So that's pretty much how it's going to go down. So uh, let's get started. David, how's your morning been? Has it been good? Yeah, so far. Um, it's really, uh, first of all, hello to everyone. And Siobhan, thank you for organizing another Ask Me Anything. Um, how cool that we have 58 chats already I'm looking through here <laughs> uh, you guys are you guys are on you guys are alive which is great um, so yeah let's get to it um, I'm not I assume that some of you were on last time we had an ask me anything uh, that was two weeks ago we're doing these every two weeks uh, we're up to 60 chats and uh, it's really fun Siobhan is uh, she's a wizard uh, she's really uh, gifted at sort of organizing these and taking relevant questions and moving us through and so uh, yeah it's good uh, Shivana I'll ask the same of you how are you I am doing fine um, yeah I'm I'm good maintaining you know maintaining it all um, and so let's so basically uh, I've already got a question uh, here in the chat and so I'm gonna get started um doria what's up doria she is asking about the global voiceover market yesterday um so some pointers in the global market as a native english speaker where do we start with agents and what are the most important things to consider um that is a big question david i don't know if you want to tackle any of that someone else Dwayne, did mention that you can buy a recording of the miss class which might be the best uh bet it's they're they're 50 bucks um and i've taken that class and it's pretty extraordinary but david i don't know if you want to speak to any of those things about the global market in particular yeah of course. started yeah of course so um yeah question uh for anyone getting started um just so you know uh if you're looking at global market of uh, voiceover and you say you're an english speaker that's uh sort of meaningless to any of your clients because what kind of English speaker are you? I mean, you're, you, if you're marketing to the world, you need to specify, you know, is this Irish English, British English, American English, Canadian English, and so on. And there's so many different Englishes. So make sure that when you market yourself, you make it clear for your prospective clients. And that is a problem that we receive on our end. In our casting department, we receive demos, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 demos, however many we receive every day. And, and the vast majority of those demos, or I should say the vast majority of the voice actors who contact us don't make our lives easier. They actually make them more difficult because someone will say they, they are a French speaker. But we don't know if they speak Malaysian French or Parisian French or Quebecois. Or, I mean, so help us. And, and you know, as I turn this around, think about the, the, the information that your prospective client will need and make sure you lay that out for them clearly. So there's one tip for uh, the beginning of your marketing campaign. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> your, your question, honestly, is a great question, like I said, and could entire hour. So I'm going to end it there just so we can move on to some other questions. But always think about your clients. Yeah, and we, uh, Jason and Simone are great, great, great resources. And Simone does do private coaching through us at Edge. So if you wanted to reach out to us and connect with her, she has the wealth of knowledge to, as she's bilingual, lives in Brazil and works very internationally. So she's a great, great resource. Also, Doria, I love your scarf. You look very bundled. I don't know where you're in from, but <laughs> you look cozy. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so let's keep it going. I have, um, 
Uh, oh, thank you, Bolton. That's so sweet. Okay, starting home studio. Uh, what is the negative of Pro Tools versus Studio One versus Audacity? I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of opinions about that, which they can jump into. But uh, David, do you want to do you want to get into those those yeah, three? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, those three. That's like saying what's the advantage of a Ferrari versus a Toyota and a Honda. Um, I don't think anyone really needs a Ferrari, you know, uh, <laughs> to get from point A to point B. Maybe it's nicer, but it's probably overkill. And uh, repairs in a Ferrari probably cost a whole lot more and take a lot more time. And same with Pro Tools. It's, it's a much more complex system. And uh, in our New York City studio, uh, we have uh, five, uh, five recording rooms and they are all Pro Tools and that's great for us. But we're recording more complex projects than any voice actor would at home. And that's because we're recording multiple tracks with music and sound effects and video and all sorts of things, the, uh, the stuff that you probably won't be doing from your home studio. So come back to my original uh, statement. Do you really need a Ferrari just to drive from point A to point B? I don't think so. And therefore you probably don't need Pro Tools. And if you're asking that question, I'm assuming you're probably pretty new to the industry, in which case starting with Pro Tools will be overwhelming it will set you back too many dollars. And I would suggest uh, friendly advice. I'd say it's, it's uh, just not necessary. I would go with any of the, the um, I'd say the lower end systems, even the, fr the, the, the free software like Audacity, they're great, they work well. Once you get down to deciding between a Toyota and a Honda, they'll maybe fall in the same price point, but they're just laid out a little differently. And what's interesting is, I don't know, you might test drive a couple of cars and you know they're all the same price and say, but one just feels right to you. That's going to happen with your digital audio workstation, your recording software, which by the way is called a DAW. Again, that's the initials for digital audio workstation. It's called a DAW. And just try a couple. Download the free samples of each one, try them out for a week. I would suggest that you go with something that's more popular because if you do, you'll probably find some classes online if you want, uh, you, know, you can always take some classes. Uh, find some, find some uh, YouTube videos on how to use um, the software. We can always help you with the, the software as well. Hope that helps. Um, amazing. I also just put in the chat, if folks want to type their personal favorite DAW that they use from their studio to give, uh, I'm going to say Deary, I'm calling you, um, but to, you know, give some advice to them, then that is wonderful. Uh, from Hello Audio Pro, can you suggest how to handle when a client contact leaves a company? How to maintain a relationship with that individual while doing the same with the company they used to work for? So basically, I work for Audible and used to be your your go your contact, and then I leave. Yeah, I think that's the question. That's a good question, uh, David. What do you reckon? Yeah, what do I reckon, y'all? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's one of the best things that can happen to you. When, when your client, you, your contact at a company leaves, assuming they go somewhere else, now, you, now the way I see it is you have, you've just doubled your contacts. You've doubled, you've doubled your clients. Stay in touch with both of them and help both of them. Uh, I think one of the worst things you can do in marketing is be a burden to any prospective client. But if you can help them you make things easy for them, that's great. So to the company, not to the, your contact at the company, but to the company that uh, your, your contact used to work at, I would contact the person who's filled their shoes and say, hey, my name is you know, Audio Pro, whatever it might be. And um, I've, for years, I worked with X contact, you know, J John or Mary, and uh, they were a delight to work with. And I have all of the old files that were ever recorded. I have all of the old session information. I have, I have the scripts. If you ever need anything from archives, please let me know. I'd be happy to help you. Find ways to help them. You know, you might say if you need uh, information, pronunciation guidelines that we used, the timings, whether or not there was no, I'm more than happy to help you with any of these things. Let them know that you're a resource for them. And that's going to hopefully convey them to, or convince them to uh, come to you whenever it is that they need to hire a voice actor. And then of course you go after your contact and, and wish them well, wherever it is that they're off to and say, look, you know, we'd love to work with you uh, where, wherever it is that you end up next. And 
you know, what do I need? Ask them, what do I need to continue our worship? You know, I can send you a wine of the month, you know, if that will help you, you tell me, do you prefer beer of the month or coffee of the month? And for a hundred bucks or something, if you maintain a client, it's absolutely worth it. So those are the things that I would do. Boom. Okay. Great, great, great. And if anyone, again, like if people have experience with that, that they want to drop in the chat, um, that's also great. Thank you, Audio sure. Pro. Yeah, we're up and to 90 as well. Siobhan, I'm not sure how you're monitoring them all. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just keep, just keeping it, keeping it chill. Uh, from Melanie M., I hear that there's an uptick in e-learning online VO work, and I'll be darned if I'm able to find or tap into that. Any suggestions or advice on how, on who needs that VO talent or where to look, who to contact? So e, how to, ta so the beginnings of the e-learning journey. Yeah. So I'm not sure what you mean by an uptick. Do you mean an uptick now since COVID-19 has set upon us? Or do you mean just in the last year or so, in the last decade? Because from my perspective, from what I've seen in our casting uh, department and from what I've heard from all of the voice actors who we hire, e-learning is um, on a pretty major uptick. I mean, it's it's been increasing year over year for many, many years. Whether it's standardized testing, compliance training, it's, it is uh, remarkable how large of a genre this has become. It's, we are recording uh, e-learning programs in multiple languages uh, probably every day, probably every day, probably multiple projects every day, in fact, at this point. Um, uh, it's huge. So there are lots of ways to market. Um, the best way, if you want to focus on the genre, would be to put together a demo that exclusively is on e-learning. Let a client know that this is something you specialize in. Even if you take a current narration demo that may have an e-learning segment and documentary segment and other things on it, resequence that demo, or I can help you with that, and put the e-learning up front, and then call it an e-learning and narration demo. So get the word e-learning in that name. And then reach out to e-learning companies. You know, if you do a Google search, you're certainly going to find thousands of them. And, um, but when you market, make sure you market in such a way that you, your the prospective client knows that this is something you special in and let them know that you, you are there to help them. As I uh, mentioned earlier uh, in one of the questions, let them know that this is your area of expertise and you're happy to help with formatting, name organization, file name organization, whatever it might be. This is something that you specialize in. This is something that you do. Uh, you'd love to work with them, uh, let them uh, ask them what it is that you can do uh, to uh, work with them. Be blunt. When you market, never, ever say, never show any lack of confidence. So never say, uh, attach just my demo. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you like it. Do you have any feedback? Never suggest any uh, lack of confidence. That's a key thing, especially when it comes to education, because e-learning, educational material, is generally all factual, so you need that authoritative and that confident that authoritative um, uh, vantage point. You need that confidence in your voice and in your marketing as well. Uh, but the work is out there. There is a lot of it. So last thing I'll say about that is, as I mentioned, go directly to e-learn companies. There are also some uh, voiceover sites that uh, specialize in matching up e-learning companies and voice actors. And of course, you can always go to the online casting sites like Voices.com and Voice123 and Budalgo and, and others. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And Melanie, I hope that was helpful, at least for the beginnings of the, that question for you. Um, I see, I'm going to say Demetra, I believe. Uh, it's fun when the words are all together. I'm like, I think this is your name. So Demetra, uh, has the amount of work decreased because of the virus and lockdowns? Go ahead, David. <laughs> it, it did. It definitely dipped a little bit. Um, but I uh, dipped, I, I think, uh, as an aggregate, like uh, looking at every voice actor, all of the work out there and looking at all of the studios and, and all, all of the, you know, um, the people involved in this industry, it did dip. Some genres actually increased, but more genres decreased in business. But at least we've seen it come back. Um, we've seen it already coming back and nicely. In fact, I think uh, whether it's that people are getting used to the new normal, uh, maybe because the market is at least 
temporarily stabilized. I don't care what the reason is. Um, it's not important right now. I'd only be speculating, but yeah, it, it's it has come back, uh, and it's 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 good. Um, parts of the work have changed for us because a lot of the work that we did was all in studio, and now we um, our five studios in Times Square, New York City, are closed because you know we're not considered an essential business. Uh, so we're only um, we've had to change our our business model. Uh, now we're only hiring voice actors with home studios. So that has meant for us a lot of new casting. So clients are coming to us saying, hey, we've worked with Mary or John voice actor for all of these years. We have a new script for them. And we say, great, but Mary or John doesn't have a home studio. Um, and we used to bring them into our studio, but we can't record them in our studio. So we, can't, we're, we are recasting a, a bunch of projects. So we actually have a little bit of extra work on the cast side right now. Um, but that's fine. Um, it's getting voice actors some work, which is nice. Uh, all the more reason for all of you to have a, a quality home studio. That is critical. I worked with a voice actor earlier this morning. Um, no, yesterday, at the end of yesterday, uh, who wanted to have uh, one of the, their children audition for a job, but her studio was not up to par um, because we were recasting that usually we would bring the kid in. Um, I took a listen to their studio and it just it was just not quite 100 percent and uh, as a result i think that the child will now lose a job which is a shame so all of you really ought to have quality home studios if you're not sure if your studio really is up to par um book a, a quarter hour session with me or a half hour session with me for me to review your audio or do something because if your audio is not up to par it's very hard to get work even if you're even if your voice sounds good it's it's pretty likely that you won't get hired as much just because of the uh, lack of audio quality. And it's an investment that's for now and always as a voice actor. Oh, yeah. One of those things yeah. that is good. I also, I, I put in the chat, I was curious if folks have felt like that they've lost work uh, as regular, as full-time voice actors or part-time voice actors, if they've had clients who, for instance, work in advertising and now aren't advertising specific products because of the number of, you know, economic issues we're having. So I think it's, you know, like David said, there's a lot going on that's, you know, uh, waxing and waning <laughs> right now. Yeah. But you know, what we did is within probably two or three days of the whole COVID-19 thing, we put out uh, a huge campaign um, that we can record COVID-19 PSAs and sponsorship ads and uh, health tips and health hotlines and stuff. And we donated, uh, we, we contacted everyone from the governor of New York to the governor of Washington state where it began. And I personally ended up speaking with the health director of, in Washington state who dealt with the very first, uh, COVID-19 patient in the U S. Um, and so that opened up an incredible amount of doors for us. Um, and it was all d donated uh, work and I was thrilled to do it. Uh, we were able to use voice actors who work in our office. Uh, we have quite a few, uh, including a few who speak other languages. And a lot of us at, at Edge Studio have home studios. So that worked out really well. And now we have nice contacts and ongoing, uh, new ongoing relationships. And when all of this is said and done, um, Hopefully they come back and, and continue working with us, and that would be terrific. Uh, but it's been really good for us to just get out there and donate our services and help as much as best as we can as a, as a small company. And uh, maybe, uh, so that's the short-term gain. And the long-term gain, yeah, maybe we'll have some additional work down the road. Because each project means that we're dealing with new video editors and new copywriters and new uh, clients and so on. So. Uh, we did that, like I said, within two or three days for this entire pandemic. We were out there uh, really, really marketing hard on that initiative. And David, I think that dovetails well into my friend, Beautiful. Love it. Where's Beautiful? <laughs> uh, you're awesome. Uh, it's asking, is this a good time to reach out to VO agents? Yeah, it's a great time. There's almost never a bad time. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's a great time. I think as as new campaigns are hitting the markets, it's a good time to hit new agents. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, from from Babis, even though I'm fluent in English, it's not my native language. Would you recommend to work exclusively 
or preferably in your native language. Um, I'm gonna look for you. I don't even, I hope I have not said your name totally wrong, but I'm wondering uh, what your language is and, oh, here you are, I'm gonna unmute you. Hi, my friend, can you, uh, Hi, your audio? I'm Finnish. Hi, you're Finnish? French, French. You're French, okay, yes. welcome. Uh, so, hi. So, David, what do you what do you have to say? And can you say your name for us, please? Babette. Ah, Babette. Perfect. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> um, so, David, yeah. So, Babette is asking about she's she's fluent in English, uh, but it's not the native language. So, what language? So, what do you recommend uh, for this kind of voice actor? Well, number one, it depends on what genres you specialize in. Number two, it depends on if you're marketing in the States or in other countries. Number three, it depends on if, you, if your English is neutral or not. It I assume your French is neutral since you, well, sorry, your French may not be neutral. You may have a, a right, French, French, accent, French from France. Know. Yeah, French from France. Okay. Yeah, but still there are different accents than right. France. That's true. So, uh, you know, it depends on marketing and, and to what countries you want to market. Okay. Ideally, I guess in the most general overview, what I would suggest is to have, um, I would suggest to have a demo in English. I would suggest to have a demo in French. I would suggest to then have a demo in English. Sorry, I would, I would suggest to have a, uh, an English demo, but throw in some French words. So for example, mm -hmm. you may be narrating a documentary and the, the topic is uh, a French painter or a French uh, sculptor or French history, something of the sort. So in the English narration, there are French words speckled in. So anyone listening to your English demo hears that you can, that you have neutral English perhaps, but that you also are, uh, you know, very comfortable with French, uh, with French. And then the, the right, have a French demo right. with English in it. And whether it's a telepathy so system, <laughs> I'm getting some crosstalk. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, you, yeah, you may have a, uh, maybe a telephony segment on your demo. Uh, in which you say for English press one, for French press two. And then on your French demo, it could be for French press one, for English press two. So in other words, on both demos, you want to show uh, the native language and then speckle in some of the other language. And ideally you would do that for every genre demo you have. So if you have a commercial demo, you would actually have the English commercial demo with French speckled on it and the French commercial demo with English words speckled throughout it. And if you also had a narration demo, you would do the same, a French and uh, an English demo. So yeah, that, I hope and, that's and that's good sound advice for uh, folks uh, who are bilingual across the board, multilingual folks. Um, yeah, thank you, Babette. So, sorry, one, one addition. Um, and throughout each of those demos, have at least one piece that has a, uh, an accent of the other. So on your English demo, you may show one piece that just, it's English with a French accent. Right, French, which we would call French accented English. And on your French demo, you may have an English accented French segment. So you're showing to whoever listens to your demo that you speak that particular language fluently, natively, whatever, it sounds neutral. You show the accent and you show some other uh, words in the other language. Amazing, okay, okay. So um, from Dimitri, Dimitri, how can we approach big company for a job here in Greece, we don't have agents, uh, but uh, but Dimitri has an agent in London and the USA. Uh, so this is a question about um, approaching a big company. I don't know how big of a company you mean, but uh, David, some quick advice for that one and approaching a big company, depending on yeah, where yeah. you are. Yeah, um, we do this a lot. Um, find a company that you think you're appropriate for. Do your homework, understand what types of voiceover they need or voice actors they need, why do they hire them. Really uh, focus, uh, study the previous jobs that they have done, or sorry, previous um, uh, videos or audio files that they've recorded at the company, listen to the voice actors. And then at some point when the time is right, uh, reach out to the right person with a, a, um, a personalized letter, a really like a customized uh, opening. So rather than just saying, hi, I'm a voice actor, I'd like to work with you, because we get 20 of those demos a day or 20 emails a day, contact them and say, look, um, I love your company for XYZ reason. 
you guys kick ass, or, you know, whatever, just give them like a one liner that just compliments them. People love compliments. And in paragraph two say, I'm also a voice actor and it makes sense for me to work with you because, and then give them the because. So if you reach out to uh, Ferrari, for example, right? You might say, uh, man, your cars are beautiful and I love the Ferrari color red. It's great, whatever, you know, one day I'll, you know, in my retirement, I hope to own a, a Ferrari. Paragraph two is, I'm also a voice actor and as a car snob, as a, uh, as a, as a car uh, expert, an automobile expert, it makes sense for uh, me to offer my, to work with you. It makes sense for us to work together. You know, um, I've researched your company. You've used voice actors in these types of situations uh, for uh, promotional ads, for sales presentations, for corporate in-house training, whatever it might be. I've studied them and I feel, feel very comfortable. I've put together a demo that showcases what I could do for Ferrari. And please take a listen to be attached. I'll be in touch with you next week. Let them know that you're there, like you're doing your research, that you're willing to work with them. You're just not another typical voice actor, but you know, how is it that you can help them? What can you do for them and, and spell it out? So no, that's, what, that's what I would do. Okay, from Ethan, from, from our kiddo in the room, he says, on a script, if it says what the person wears, but it includes something like a hat and it also says no props, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I would, well, I, I can't. I'm not sure what that's about. Are you talking on camera or on mic? I, Ethan, you know, um, I think if they're talking about what the person wears, they, you're maybe it's to help you imagine the character that you're uh, that you're auditioning for. Yeah, it includes something like a hat. It. Yeah, well, you know what. If it helps you get in character, then absolutely do it. You know, that's something that we always talk about. It, um, uh, so so just, just to give some perspective here, EDGE has two different departments. We have our casting and production department, but we also have an education department. And in the education department, any of our coaches will tell you that the more, in char the, the more you play up to the character, the better of a job you'll do narrating that particular character. So if you're narrating a character who slumps over, pretty darn helpful if you actually slump, uh, slump over at the microphone. I mean, it just, it, it conveys the sound that you're looking for, that the client is listening for. And um, so, yeah, if your character wears a hat, has a pot belly, whatever it might be, dress up like your character. Uh, it certainly can't hurt as long as the, you know, it doesn't mess up your sound quality. Uh, I would do it. It's hmm. like a fun question. Thanks for asking it. <laughs> Thanks, Ethan. From Jamie, I am just starting out and doing a project from GarageBand. Is it sufficient? Yes, but it's not as easy. GarageBand software is not as easy to edit on as a lot of the other software that voice actors use. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good succinct answer. GarageBand is intended more for music than for voice. Am I right about that? Oh. It could be for voice if you're just talking and you're not a voice actor, so you don't need to go in and uh, edit, you know, breaths out and popped P's and sibilants and things like that. Um, from Dwayne, uh, can you recommend a budget-friendly way to get a decent website? Yeah. Um, I'll tell you my answer, but I want to preface it by saying that unless you can unless you know what a decent website looks like it's going to be hard to use uh, a, a free template website uh, and, and get anything out of it in other words you can you can be given a free template and if you don't know what to do with that template it's never going to look professional or it's doubtful that it will that said there are lots of free templates out there you do a search online you'll find them if you go to for example godaddy.com if you purchase your domain through GoDaddy, I'm pretty sure, not positive, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that you get to select from their templates. And I think they have free templates, or if not, they are unbelievably inexpensive. I wouldn't be surprised if you pay seven or eight or nine dollars to have the domain, like your, your website address for a year. And along with that, you get a template website, or maybe it's another 10 bucks or 20 bucks for the year. It, it's Again, I'm guessing at this, but I, I think it's an incredibly nominal fee. If you have the money to swing uh, for it, I would I would go with a professional. 
because your website is one of the many direct links between you and getting work. In other words, if a client hears your phone and they say, man, this, you know, she or he sounds really good. They sound right for this particular audition. Uh, for this, they're, they're right for the script. Let's check out their website. If their website looks horrible, it's a turnoff. It would be better to have no website, bad website, without question. So if you can swing it, I would go with a professional company like Voice, Act, Voice Actor Websites, for example. They're terrific, amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, again, that's voiceactorswebsites.com. Uh, Joe Davis, who owns that site, is great. Um, there are others out there, but I think that uh, they're just, uh, they're the ones that I would call if, if I was a voice actor. That said, uh, look around at templates. Um, and further to that, if you design your own website, I would urge you, urge you, urge you, urge you to book a session with someone, myself or whomever, who can really uh, consult on that website before you release it to clients, before you post it. In. Let me take a look at it. Um, it may be 15 minutes, a 30 minute session with me, and I'll probably be able to point out a ton of things that you wouldn't necessarily think about because over the years I've seen, I'm talking tens of thousands of voice actor websites, and I've seen what works and I've seen what doesn't. More, more importantly, I've sat there with clients uh, for 30 years or so, 20 year, 25 years since we've had, you know, vo since voice actors have been working with websites. And I've sat there with clients who look at websites and say, yeah, I like this voice actor, or I like the website for this reason, or I don't like it for that reason. So I've heard it from the client's perspective. So I'm always happy to share my thoughts on your website. So if you're not sure what you're doing, let me hit it before you actually go and market it. Mm, super valuable. I have a quick question I'm going to respond to from Joan about purchasing demos with Edge several years ago. There is not an expiration date, so you can cash in on that right now. And you totally, yeah, <laughs> thumbs up. Yeah, thanks for asking. I know that's like a what, but we totally honor that stuff. So happy to have you uh, come join us now. Um, for from, from C. Michelle, I'm just beginning and would like to know what genres are best for my voice. So that one's going to be hard for us to really get into here on this kind of casual session. I'm going to also just pop in and say, like, we would encourage you, whether with, 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 if it's with us or anywhere else, to book a, a, a session with a coach. We ourselves do an introductory uh, investigate voiceover class. That's a group class, and that's for everybody from anywhere. And our coaches do um, evaluations for each individual student and tell you what genres they think you would be best for. Um, and so I think you're going to have to speak, whether it's in a group class with us or elsewhere or a private session, wherever. Um, you've got to kind of speak to a professional to know that. I come from the theater background. I thought I was good for a certain type of thing that after working with Edge, realized is not my genre at all. So, um, so it's going to take, uh, it's going to take some studying, um, from Kunjan wait, wait, without purchase. Oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. David. Sorry. To, yeah. Let me interject something. Um, because yeah. it, it is a, it's a smart question to ask where you belong in this industry, because there are the way we categorize it, 27 genres. And, um, yeah, you're right, Siobhan, you know, people do come in and they're interested in one genre and they realize that they're not necessarily marketable for that genre. There are a lot of things to consider. Uh, you have to consider just the quality of your voice and, and who's hiring that quality voice. But that's only one part of it. That, that's the thing that most people think about. There's also just your personal interests um, because uh, for a variety of reasons, your personal interests may lead you to a whole lot of work. I gave an example earlier of, of, of reaching out to Ferrari and trying to get work. If you are a car buff, right? If you're a sports car fanatic or whatever like that, you may want to specialize in automobile voiceover. Uh, th that is a, that's become a genre, a specialty. Um, you have to look at your interests, your personal goals, whether you want part-time or full-time work, whether you're comfortable working through the union or you want to go non-union. You have to consider whether you want to work from a home studio or not, which I would consider to work from a home studio. You need to think about how you want to audition through agents or through online casting sites. There are lots of things to think about. You even have to think about just your personal... Um, your personality, your your own sort of quirks. Uh, if you are a fidgeter, I mean, I don't think you could sit still for an audiobook recording. Um, you have to think about how your consi your long-term consistency and stamina. 
which if you don't have, you may be better at short form narration like commercials and things. And if you have it, maybe you want to go to longer form. I mean, there are so many variables. So you need to work with someone who really understands all of those variables, someone who can put them all together and listen to you read and ask you the right questions. And at the end say, based upon what you've said, it makes sense for you to, to follow in this genre or these three or four genres, because that seems to be where you, you would be most marketable. So a lot of things to think about. Uh, I'm happy to help at any time to, to assess you. Um, something like that takes about one hour. Uh, they're easy. Um, I actually really enjoy doing assessments like that and kind of helping you uh, like figure out a, a game plan, like or where do you belong in this industry, if you belong at all, and if so, where in the industry, and, and what logical steps would you take to make it happen? Okay, sorry to interrupt. Thank you. No, that's okay. Thank you. I, I she, she put a thumbs up. I see you. Thank you. Um, I'm like, I'm just like, with, with the edge, not edge names, these Zoom names, I'm just like, see Michelle, but you might go by Michelle, but you know, like, you're great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Kunjan was asking, uh, he says, without purchasing another mic, can you put your current VO condenser microphone above the head to keep the mic out of the video when recording? I don't know. Do you need clarification on that, David? Because I see Kunjan right here. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't, it depends on, man, it depends on so many things, though. There, for everyone out there, there's never one right answer for anything. It depends on the style of microphone you have. I mean, if you're working with a shotgun microphone, you can generally put those further away from your, your body, from your mouth, and, and aim it at your mouth, and you get, you'll get more of a direct sound, and, and maybe that's okay. But if, the record, if your recording room is, is, um, uh, has any reverb, if it's resonant at all, then it probably won't work. I mean, if your room has any, uh, any bounce in it, uh, then unless your microphone is really in front of you, I don't think you'll have any chance of, of getting a decent sound. If you're in a booth that is really isolated, where the, the sound acoustics are really good, like in other words, all four walls and the ceiling and the, and the floor are padded with carpets and blankets and foam and pillows and all sorts of stuff, unless that room is really dead like that, and that's the word we use for dead, meaning there's no echo inside that booth, then the microphone, I don't think it'll work above your head. But if the room is really dead, then maybe the microphone will work above your mouth, depending on the genre that you're recording. Some genres require a more upfront, sorry, let me say this differently. Some genres, and sometimes even just the script, require a more, uh, a closer feel um, to the microphone, whereas others don't. So it depends, again, on the genre. It depends on the script that you're recording. It depends on the direction that the client has given you. And I think most importantly, it depends on the, micro the equipment, the microphone, and the acoustic uh, qualities of your recording booth. So it's not, you can tell me what microphone you have, but that's only one of the five or six uh, variables that need to be answered. Does that help well, a little bit? Or just, does it help or does it leave you with more question marks? <laughs> no, it definitely leaves me with a lot more questions just because I've been kind of doing a lot more video and uh, trying different things of putting my video condenser mic up. Um, you know, I don't want to bore the 98 people on here with it because this is probably a very uh, more technical question. So we can do this at another time though. But that does yeah, I mean, you, you can always my questions though. You can always record yourself uh, with the mic right in front of you, right at your face, and just say in your recording, hey, David, right now I'm speaking, uh, and I'm recording and the microphone is facing my mouth four inches away and then hit pause on the recording, move the mic eight inches away and say, okay, I'm continuing the recording at eight inches away and hit pause and then put the, the microphone higher, you know, where you want it out of sight uh, for a camera and say, now I'm, now I'm above my head. And I would have someone take photographs while you do that. Mm -hmm. So if I say, you know what, it sounded really good in between the four inches and the eight inches where it sounded really good when it was in this position, like give me 10 or 15 different positions oh, and we'll good. find the one that sounds good. And then you have a, if someone's taking pictures of each one or a video of it, then you have a visual representation. And if I say to my ears, it sounds most marketable when it is at this, you know, spot A or spot C or 18 inches there or five inches to the left or whatever it is. And then you, you can go in and uh, recreate that sound anytime. Mm. 
Thank you. Thank you, Kunjan. Tough. You guys have, there's just so much going on. Tough questions. I barely know what you're talking about there. <laughs> um, okay, cool, cool, cool. So moving on to, I think this is Carly, Carly or Carl. I am just starting out and have some basic software on my Mac. I need to put together a demo. Would you recommend I, would you recommend I attempt to do it on my own or hire an engineer slash professional? I think if you ask all 100 people on this call, anyone who's involved in the industry, if you should make your own demo, they will all say no. It's, it's near impossible to record your own demo because unless you truly know exactly what is being casted today, like not, not last week, not last year, but what are clients working, uh, looking right, what, what are they looking for right now? You need to know that. Then you need to know exactly what kind of material to put on your script, how long those segments should be, how they should be organized, how they should be recorded. Um, are you also an engineer and you can mix with music and sound effects and have it sound real? My goodness, we I've been mixing and recording for 30 something years and I still get better every day. And after all of this time, I can listen to something that I worked on last year and say, you know, how did I miss that? Like I, I can make that better today. I'm still getting better. And I hope that I will continue getting better. So I have a 30 year adva uh, advantage on you and, and lots of other uh, voice actors do. So the uh, answer is no, you, you really, it, it's not practical to do on your own. Um, would you work with an engineer? Yeah, you can work with an engineer, but it has to be an engineer who understands the voice of our industry. That's because engineers who are video engineers or music engineers have an incredibly different set of equipment and different ears and they strive for different sounds. So you need to work with someone who is truly involved exclusively in the voice of our industry but then also work with a, a producer or a coach who knows exactly what kind of content to put on your demo. Um, I've said it a couple of times on this call and here it comes again. I mean, work with me or work with someone, one of our coaches at Edge. Um, we have 24 coaches at Edge. They each specialize in different genres. A couple of them work in, in all genres. They have sort of a general comprehension of the entire industry, but a lot of our coaches specialize in certain genres. And I mean, they're experts in these particular fields. So, you know, if you want something that's really going to help you get out there and, and get started, I would do it the right way. Um, like any profession, right? You have to invest in yourself. If you want to become a, a lawyer or, an, or a nurse or a financial advisor, I mean, you just, you have to put some money into it. It's just what you have to do. You have to invest. And I see you. It must be Carl. I see you. I see your window. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, cool. Great, great, great. Thank you, thank you. These are important questions for to for all of us to consider. I've got Daniel from Germany, uh, or based in Germany, because he is. And you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Daniel is an Israeli actor living in Germany, speaks fluent English, and is interested in doing voice acting. Any tips on how to get inside the business? Uh, he's feeling lost from all the different voice acting websites and would like to know where to start. Yeah, we, we, I feel like we sort of covered that already. Yeah, Siobhan, you mentioned taking uh, a basic class with us called the Investigate VoiceOver class. And that's just, it's a terrific class. I think it's like that. Um, and you'll work with one of our coaches and a small, I think there may be maybe on average like seven or eight people in a class. If they're not that big and learn some, some general ideas about how the industry works and uh, the coach will have you do some reading and we'll get back to you with uh, based upon your voice, the genres that you may be marketable in. You could do a private evaluation with me uh, through Edge um, or a, a, an assessment and I can sort of lay out a, a plan for you. Um, but I, I certainly would, I would caution you to trust everything you read online. If you ask the question on a voice over form, for example, uh, how to get started, 20 voice actors will each give you 20 different answers. Uh, so take them all with a grain of salt because I find that a lot of voice actors speak from their own perspective. So someone might say, yeah, it worked. You know, I, I, uh, I went to audiobook publishing companies and it worked great, but maybe you're not set out to be an audiobook narrator. So, you know, take what other people say, but like I said, just understand that what works for one person may not work for everyone else. It usually doesn't work for everyone else. So you can ask the question around and take everyone's answer and put it all together and then 
take our investigate voiceover class or have a private uh, assessment with me and and together we can lay out all of the information and really understand where it is that you will potentially do best in the industry and and lay out that sort of a, a plan of action a plan of attack so you can actually get some work okay yeah and i and again you know we we've had folks um think you know drop it in the chat saying do it james says do investigate voiceover class from edge it's worth it um i think i think it's worth it i've you know i've, I've taken the class um and again you know whether it is with us or elsewhere you know some basic some intro educational courses for new folks it's just so it's just really going to make you it's going to solve the lost feeling problem which i can relate to when you're getting into an industry you're just like there's the internet is so full of overwhelming information um so thank you uh thank you daniel for asking um carmen is asking how much should you expect to pay to record a demo well carmen how much do you expect to pay for a house <laughs> I mean, it depends. There's so many variables again. There are companies out there that charge, I've seen like a hundred bucks for a demo and the quality is horrendous, but you can pay it. I don't think it will ever get you work. I mean, they sound hor horrible. And um, I've seen demos go for $5,000. And I think that that is just absurd. Uh, it shouldn't cost that much. Uh, I don't, I don't intend to get into pricing uh, during this call, what we charge for demos, but I think that what we charge is very fair. And so there's a, a gigantic range out there. To some degree, it depends on the genre that you're recording. So if you're recording a, um, a genre that requires complex mixing, like animation demos or promos, and a more focus on writing up, uh, customizing scripts for you and everything, specialized music and taglines, it's going to cost more. And some genres cost less, of course, to record a demo. Uh, then it depends on the amount of expertise that your team has. You know, uh, are you working with a coach who's day one at this or, you know, year 100 at this? So there are lots of variables out there. So again, the ranges I've seen from $100 to about $5,000. Uh, we're, um, I think we're, I'd like to say we're at the right price point. <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't really think so much about the price point. I just, find the right person to record your demo because going to the wrong person to save money is just not helpful because the wrong person won't give you the right demo and you won't get work anyway. It's just sort of a waste and no reason to spend more than you have to either. So I don't know. I think it all comes down to, again, starting with someone who can evaluate you and then suggest a, a, an appropriate coach. And if, when I evaluate someone, and again, whether the evalu evaluator is me or someone else, I can listen to someone and say, you know what, after working with you for an hour, you are clearly marketable in audiobook work. And here are the names of a couple of audiobook coaches uh, out there. They work through Edge or wherever, and they're just fabulous. And they, they live and breathe audiobooks. That is all they know. And they know who, which audiobook publishing companies you're hiring today. They can help you put together a demo that will get you work today. Maybe it won't work in five years from now, but who cares about them? Because by then, you, hopefully, you'll have more work to put on your demo. The demo is going to get you work right now. That's what you need, you know, a start, a jump into this thing. And, and that's what they focus on. Like I said, they live and breathe audiobooks. So I can always kind of make a suggestion as to where to go and who to work with and, and take it from there. And, and that's an ultimately you want to work with to record a uh, to record demo. Um. The next question is from, okay, from Doria. What casting, what are casting directors for animated series expecting in animation voice demos? That's a great question. So I think the first thing to, to there are a couple of different uh, things to talk about. One is the difference between character work and animation work, because there's a lot of confusion out there in the marketplace. So. There are some animated uh, animation casting uh, teams that are looking s simply, uh, specifically, I should say, for animated voices on, anim uh, on animation demos. And sometimes they're looking for character and animation voices. So the difference between character and animation is this. Character usually is a voice that is representative of someone else. In other words, you're sort of imitating someone else. It could be a fake accent. It could be a stereotypical cab driver or, or a stereotypical plumber. 
Um, it could be an impersonation of a celebrity, even though that's very rarely used in the industry. Again, a character is sort of recreating a voice that exists out there. Maybe you're told to sound like a cowgirl or a cowboy. That's something that does exist. That's a character. Whereas animation, in animated voices, when you, you give voice, you create and give voice to something that doesn't talk in real life. So if you were playing the part of a talking car or a talking fish or whatever it might be, you are animating something, and that's the voice. So if you're going after uh, an animated production client and they're looking solely for, well, if you do your homework and you know that they're looking for animated voices, then you want to give that person more animated voices. Whereas if that prospective client of yours works on animated voices and character voices, perhaps you want to include both on your demo. So that's one key thing. After that, make sure that the demo has as much variety as you can muster up because when it comes to character work and or animation work, variety is really, really important most of the time, unless your voice is very unique and your, your natural voice in of itself is the character. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, variety is really key, but don't, uh, don't push your variety so far that the segments on your demo don't sound marketable. In other words, go as big as you can, as wide as you can, to the point that you no longer sound marketable and that's where you, you stop. I hope that makes sense. Uh, because anything that sounds unmarketable, anything where you're having to work too hard, where, where you have to work the words too hard, that's a turnoff to casting teams, right? You need to be able to do these voices comfortably and confidently and easily. And if you have to work the words so hard to the point that it sounds strained or contrived, you're not going to get work. Likewise, if you have to work your voice so hard to muster up some crazy character sound, then you probably won't get hired because you won't be able to uh, perform a voice like that long term. Oh, we get demos sometimes, and you can hear that there's a voice actor doing some character spot or animation spot on their demo, and they're really roughing their voice. And I feel like they could probably only record that script for 10 seconds, and then they, they can't go on because they're going to scratch their throat too much or or hurt their voice, their vocal cords. And you think, well, you know, if you can barely get through 10 seconds of this, how could I hire you for a 60 second commercial or a three minute cartoon or something like that? Um, will you be able to even come back a year later and, and change a couple of lines in that particular recording? Because if you're working your, your voice so hard, you may never be able to come up with that exact voice again. We won't be able to match any uh, re-records down the road. So yeah, get as much variety as you can without going too far. And uh, th these are things that any animation expert can help you with, myself or you know, anyone else. We also offer animation sessions at Edge Studio. Uh, Jay Snyder, the voice of Yugi and Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, um, uh, he was my animation coach and uh, he's super incredible. But again, you know, coaching from wherever is gonna help you figure out what your demo needs. I've got Bill. So we're going to go till 2.10 since it kind of took us some time to get into the session. Um, uh, so from Bill says, that are, says, are there a lot of regular actors who are now unemployed due to COVID who are trying to transition into voiceover? If so, should newbies like myself expect there to be heightened competition when trying to break into VO? Great question. What's yeah, your, what's your take? Yeah. Um, Certainly, I think that there is uh, there are some actors moving into the voiceover world, and that's always been the case. Um, but I'll tell you, for every actor that uh, is state, when we say actor, I'm talking now stage actor, a stage actor or a film actor. Um, for every one of those who are moving into the voiceover world, I'm also familiar with uh, voice actors who are moving into the on camera world. Like someone asked about 15 minutes ago, who wanted to put the microphone above their head because they're doing more video. There are more people moving into the on-camera world. Um, there's always a, a slide over. Lots of voice actors move into on-camera, and lots of on-camera actors and stage actors move into voiceover. That said, yeah, I've had a, I've seen a, a couple of more uh, actors moving to voiceover, perhaps at the moment. But I mean, that's a short-term thing. I mean, you know, it's happened maybe over the, the last five or six weeks. Um, I worked with a celebrity voice actor uh, earlier this week. I uh, sorry, the celebrity actor. Uh, I won't say their name. Uh, big movie guy who's getting into voiceover now, but that was not because of COVID-19. That's not because of films just being held back uh, from being produced. That was just because he's always been told to do this and, um, and he finally wanted to try it. So who knows? 
Uh, I think that that's just a short-term thing. There's more voiceover work out there than ever before in general. And yeah, maybe it dipped a little bit at the beginning of the COVID-19 thing and it seems to be coming back. Um, but the our industry is growing. It has been growing. Um, I really, I've said it before, when I began Edge uh, many years ago, I just, I think I was in the right place at the right time. I got lucky because it was the start of an, it was really at the start of a industry that has just grown every single year since I've been involved with it. So, you know, it's been good for voice actors and uh, other studios and casting teams like ourselves here. So, it's all, um, all good. Yeah, and Bill, don't be, don't be frightened of heightened, of lots of competition because that's always going to be there and you're, you can still find your way. And we're all used to tons of rejections and tons of competition and, and all of that jazz. Um, I've got uh, Sion, who's, uh, I hope I may have messed your, your name up, but um, cool. I'm so happy to hear about that, your multilingual skills and the advice. Um, this person's expressing gratitude about Babette's question earlier. So I'm glad that that resonated with a few different folks. Um, my, my pal ER is saying, how is the Spanish BO market? Uh, I am Latina Hispanic from Los Angeles, speak English and Spanish, but here it is best for me to do a demo in Spanish. Um, I feel like maybe we've sort of answered this question. Does Edge Studio do commercial demos remotely? We totally do. Reach out to us to talk about rates and prices. We also have, we do entirely Spanish demos um, and we can do, uh, I, I feel, David, do you feel like we've sort of answered this question? Uh, reach out to us, uh, Sion, or yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. We have. Um, yeah, so uh, the key points from, uh, if it was Babette's question, make sure you, you, when you market, make sure you mention what type of Spanish you market. I, I, the way uh, I've seen it classified is that there are 41 different types of Spanish. Uh, make that clear, have an English demo and a Spanish demo and an accented Spanish demo in English and the reverse and you know do all of the things that we mentioned before. Uh, we produce a crazy amount of Spanish work. The crazy is a weird word to use. A good amount, a lot of Spanish work. Uh, for our uh, production clients, and, and we cast a lot also, so it'd be a nice, a nice chance to work with yet another vo uh, Spanish voice actor. Um, we could produce you by phone, um, yeah, uh, that or Skype or however you know you want to connect. That's all good. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Um, so then I am looking. Sorry, I'm, I'm scrolling all around. Okay, okay. Good question, working fine, and I see. Okay, from Scott, is there protocol for rates when the VO is for a nonprofit? There's no protocol, anything. <laughs> There's really not. Um, it depends on it depends on the organization, their funding. It depends on your your. Um, your devotion to the organization and, and if you want to or, or don't want to donate your own time. I mentioned that we, uh, we uh, two or three days into this whole uh, coronavirus thing got into reaching out to governors and mayors and health clinics and uh, health departments and uh, we, I wanted to, to donate everything. Um, but that doesn't mean that because I wanted Edge Studio, my company to do that, doesn't mean that is right for you to do that. Um, so. Are, are there rates which are right? I don't know. One thing that does bother me very much, I, I will say, is when companies come to us, when certain uh, individuals or companies come to us and say, hey, we're putting together a, a, a nonprofit PSA, and would you be willing to donate your studio time? And can you find a voice actor to donate their services? And then we find out that the person who contacted us is actually making money off of the job. That is one place where I draw the line, at least for our company. In other words, if the person who reaches out to us is going to make some money, then it's not fair that they expect us to not make money. I think if they want us to do it for free, then I think that they should also do it for free. So we only will work with an organization who is also doing it as a nonprofit, uh, truly as a nonprofit, who are people who are donating their own time. Um, so uh, that's, that's just, but that's a personal thing, a very personal thing. Uh, as far as the rates go, there's no rates, not at all. You do, you charge what you think is right for you. There are guidelines. We have a rate card on our website and we have an enhanced rate card coming out soon. I'm very excited about it. It should be out, it should be out in about uh, two months. Ago. Um, and it breaks down the industry to about 27 different genres and has unbelievable details uh, in every genre and how to record whether you're, uh, sorry, how to charge 
whether you're doing the editing or not, in, in addition to the recording, whether or not you're doing a um, repeat business or not, and all sorts of variables. It's a really complex card. So look out for that. Um, I'm seeing a question about uh, from Demetra about how much a modest but effective home studio costs. I mean, you know, that's that's a big convo too. If you want to kind of quickly get into that, David. Yeah, I mean, a, a decent studio could cost you $250. I mean, you could be done at $250. Because if you purchase a, a relatively good USB microphone for let's say $200 or $250, and if you, assuming you already have really good headphones, that type that go over your ears you need. If not, then you spend another 50 or 75 bucks on good headphones. But then you're done because you already have a computer, I, I assume, right? You're on this call, so you have a computer. And you can download free software like Audacity or whatever. And uh, as far as a recording booth goes, if you don't mind the look of it, you can just pad the walls and the ceiling and the floors with pillows and blankets and sleeping bags and moving blankets and clothing and old sweaters and just you know make an inch layer thick of everything on ev uh, of um, of fabric on all of the walls and surfaces and your room will look weird and and ugly and but no one will ever see it and it's totally fine. So, you know, again, your recording booth can be free. You have the studio uh, in terms of the software and computer, which won't cost you anything. So yeah, uh, to repeat it, let, let's say a $250 USB microphone, which is pretty good, $50 headphones, so maybe 300 bucks in, and I think you're in business. So I don't know how, I don't, this question, I'm not sure. Linda is asking, what is the best way to find out who to contact? Like example, AAA or ARP, both of whom I know do a lot of videos. Who to contact? Well, that's a very open-ended question. It depends on what kind of work you want to do. I mean, they put out, both of those organizations put out a lot of, we've actually worked with both of those organizations. So, but are you looking for commercial work? Because then you might contact their ad department or the marketing department. Um, if you can find their, their in-house copywriters, you might contact them. If you're looking to get into e-learning, you may want to contact their communications department, their training department, their HR department. Um, if you're looking for corporate uh, presentational uh, presentation work, then contact their sales department. I mean, um, contact their, if you want telephony work, you would go right to their communications department uh, for their telephony systems. It, there are so many different types of work out there. That's uh, I can't be more specific because I don't know the type of work that you're looking for. So, but hopefully when you market, then you'll make it clear to your listener, uh, to your, uh, I say your listener, sorry, your, your client, your prospective client, why you are contacting them. So if you are looking for telephony work, then you reach out to their communications department and you say, I'm a telephony voice actor or a telephony voice narrator. I specialize in IVR, voicemail systems, pre-recorded message menu prompts and information on hold and voicemail systems. And over my career, I've researched these things and I love AARP or my parents are members. I love the AAA. I'm a member. I've used it multiple times. I'm a proud card carrying you know, AAA member and uh, I'd love to work with you. And here's my demo. I'll be in touch next week and you know, and you do your thing. Um, so other than that, I can't be more specific because I don't have the information. I'm gonna do two more because I, because I think the, both of these are interesting, good questions for us to, to, to wrap up on. One from Amanda Porter uh, in uh, Vancouver. Um, and, and she says, thank you for your time. And, and she's based in Vancouver. And she was asking, do many uh, VO actors, do, do you at EDGE book many voice actors from other countries? And if so, do you tend to deal with them directly or do you deal with their agents? Yes, and most of the time, no. We record a tremendous amount of international work. It's pretty common for our clients to call us and say, here's the, you know, they contact us, here's a script they tell us, and they need it translated into some number of languages. Sometimes it's just one language, sometimes it's 17 languages. And then they leave it up to us to not only handle the, the translation, but also the localization, and then contact and hire uh, voice actors and record it all and, and get it off to the client. And unfortunately, sometimes they give us incredibly tight, uh, like ridiculously tight deadlines to do all of this work. Uh, so for us, 
it's great if we can hire a voice actor who lives in the particular region where we need the type of voice from, because then we're more confident that we're getting the right uh, full language, the right accent and everything like that. You know, to Babette, who is, uh, she said, you know, she's in, in France. If our client needs Canadian French, we're not going to hire Babette because then we want a Canadian French accent. But then we would ask our clients, well, do you want a Montreal accent? Do you want a Quebec, uh, Quebec accent? I mean, what, you know, what type of accent do you want? And if we can hire a voice actor from that particular area, again, we're more assured of getting the right accent. I'm, I'm okay hearing accents and distinguishing one from the other, but I can't really tell you the difference between Parisian French, Malaysian French, Canadian French, and, and so on. That, that's beyond my, my own hearing. Um, so if we hire someone from that region, we feel more confident that the client is getting what it is that they ask for. So we do hire a lot of international voice actor remote uh, to do remote projects. Um, I feel like there was a part B of that question. Um, Siobhan, mm -hmm. what was the part B? Oh, do you deal directly with their agents? Oh, right, right, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Um, very often we deal directly with the voice actor, but uh, if it's a, sometimes if it's a union job, sometimes if, if it's a larger scale job, we go through agencies, uh, when we record uh, certain companies like Rosetta Stone, we do a lot of, I think we do all of their language learning uh, programs. Uh, they have such a long, incredibly uh, detailed casting process that we end up going directly to voice actors and through agents because we just need so many voice actors for every language uh, that we have to find them in any means we possibly can. Uh, so it, it depends on our client and our timeline. It depends on the client's budget. There are some variables around that. So um, the last question I'm going to do, and then I'm going to kind of breeze through everybody to, to wrap up. But I see, uh, but Jay Viasio, um finds the art of VO fascinating, however, is a very shy person. Is there anything I can do that will help me with my fear of not performing adequately and build more confidence? Yeah, train. <laughs> um, I mean, training will help a lot with the right coach. And also remember that, remember that when you record, uh, no one is looking at you. Like what we're all doing today with video, this is virtually unheard of in the voiceover industry. Like I'll tell you, um, since our quarantine began, uh, today makes six weeks in fact, I've not shaved. I've never ever grown anything like this. And I feel really awkward about it. I'm just not used to it. And I was thinking like, well, maybe, oh, by the way, let me say my best friend also hasn't shaved for six weeks. And I was, I was saying to him, like, maybe I should shave because I'm going to be on camera. Like, this is unheard of in our industry, right? No one ever sees you. And, and, um, and so obviously I chose not to shave, but the, the nice thing about this industry is no one will ever see you. So that should hopefully give you some confidence, you know, um, to do your thing and, and just have fun with it at the microphone. That's one of the greatest, that's one of the biggest reasons why a lot of voice actors become voice actors because they want to perform, they can do uh, interesting voices, they like reading out loud, uh, they have a pleasant sounding voice, a marketable voice, for whatever reason they get into voiceover, but they're shy on stage, they're shy in front of other people. And this is the perfect outlet to be able to do that. But I do find that when coaching people like that, usually there is a lack of confidence in their performance uh, and until they, until they feel confident about their performance, then they don't let it out and you won't get work until you let it out. So there are some easy ways to work with a, a new voice actor and, and help them feel comfortable enough to let it out. So it's not hard at all. Um, so, uh, yeah, work with someone, me, someone else, uh, hopefully you'll want to work with me. Uh, hopefully I can get you there. I've done it before for lots of folks. Um, but work with someone and, and get past that that shy stage, that concern stage, and, and just have fun with it. That's what this industry is about. Sorry, I mute myself when I'm typing because I don't I don't know if it sounds annoying or not. Um, no. My friends, uh, people are being so great. I know folks are are signing off because we've, you know, an hour is a lot of time, and yet no time at all during this weird time of our lives. Um, so thank you, thank you to everybody who is here. I know we didn't get to everyone. We, you know, I mean, David tries to be as in depth as possible with everybody so that we can get to everybody and then, well, so that we can actually answer your question and not gloss over you, but it does mean that it's hard to get to everyone. However, we are doing another one of these 
um, two weeks from now at the same uh, the same bat time, which is 1 p.m. Eastern. And so today is what day? It's the 23rd. So it'll be the 7th of May. Holy smokes! At 1 p.m. Um, the beard totally works, David. So yes, so my my people, um, for all of us here who are folks have been expressing interest in working with David, um, we do have a, a, a twenty five dollars off of coaching session. Um, that is a code we are offering, um, and you can uh, tap into it. And I'm oh, here's okay. There's a few things. The first thing is this is a link that I'm gonna drop for David's demo package. So if you want to train with David and work towards a demo, we have sweet discounts going on for uh, for that. And that link is right here. Um, but I've, I've dropped this a couple of times, but the email, if you wanna just do a, a coaching session with David, just contact training at edgestudio.com and you can uh, um, and you can book a session. And we are offering $25 off of these sessions for as a thank you to you guys for hanging out with us. Um, and there's like a coupon and it is this, I believe it's AMA with DG25. So you can use that uh, or you can also just be like, I was at the, I was at, uh, the AMA with David and Siobhan um, and we'll hook you up. If this is all hard to remember, if you are on social media, you can, I'm, I'm the person behind the, the curtain on all the socials. So if you're following us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Insta, you can just reach out to me there and I'll make sure that you get the discounts we're offering um, for joining us today. Uh, moreover, if you are um, not following us on socials, uh, please do. I would love to see you there. Um, if you are following us already and you enjoyed this session, if you'd like to say something about it, that would be amazing. Um, and that way I'll know I'll, I'll, I'll see you and uh, I'll be sure that we are following you because that's something that we really want to kind of work towards doing as well as building this community digitally, especially right now and following each other and supporting each other in that way. So we're uh, on Instagram, we're at edge studio VO, but on Twitter, we are simply edge studio. Um, so I think that that's all I want to I think that's about it that I have to say right now. David, is there anything else that I'm missing? Uh, no, you've done a great wrap up. I, I want to um, I want to thank Siobhan for putting this together. I want to thank all of you for sitting here for an hour. That's awesome. Hope uh, ho I hope the information that I gave and, and the questions that Siobhan uh, asked uh, on behalf of all of you were helpful to all of you and you have some some good takeaways, something that can help you build your career, or at least direct you um, in a better way. I hope that it's been helpful. And yeah, cool. I hope you come back in two weeks. Um, I wish everyone yeah, and, was safe and well, all that good stuff. I know this is like chaotic and there's a lot of people, a lot of questions flying around, but please, um, yeah, please join us again. And I hope it was, even if your question didn't get answered, you please join us uh, next time and, and jump right in and we'll we'll get to as many people as we can. It means a lot to us that you're here. We miss everybody, um, but we're also finding nice opportunities to meet folks that uh, we don't meet, you know, just locally in, in New York City. Your smiling faces have certainly brightened my day. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed what I've learned from you all as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, yes, yeah, see you on Twitter. <laughs> and uh, hope to hear from y'all soon. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, Joan. Nice to see y'all. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> bye. Take care, everyone. Bye now. Bye, bye, bye. Mwah.